Back into more alter ego, I am now a child. Practice yourself, for heaven's sake, in little things, and thence proceed the greater. Epictetus, 50 to 120 AD, Discourses, BK1, Chapter 18. Cool. Uh, oh my god. Let's look at my stats, first of all. Uh, no occupation, no relationship status. Uh, I'm very intellectual, awesome, but vocational, not so much. Looking at the this second category, it looks like my highest is expressiveness and my lowest is calmness. Which is weird, I'm a calm person, so. But this is an alter ego. So, and I still have 370 money, I have no idea how I got that. I guess it's like my savings fund or something. But I guess we'll start here. Mom has just taken a job that requires her to be away in the morning and early afternoon. She decides to enroll you in a nursery school program. Upon your arrival, you are greeted by another lady with very skinny legs and large round glasses. Uh, there are children playing with buckets of sand, building blocks, and other activities. There's a small boy sitting in a corner with tears streaming from his eyes, a runny nose, and cheeks red from crying. Is it that crybaby I saw back when I was an infant? But, uh, alright, I'm excited. I'm gonna... I'm gonna... Well, what the fuck is a left... Uh, a left hook? What the fuck is a left hook? I'm gonna... I'm gonna go try to make friends. Your excitement is a positive sign that you're trying to adapt to this new environment. You realize that your mom will be coming back, so you and her, you attempt to make no, no, you attempt to make friends. You see a little boy, your age, playing in the sand with trucks. What would you like to say to him? Hi. The little boy ignores. There's a bug on my laptop screen. Get it, get the fuck out of here. The little boy ignores you. You are a newcomer to the social order of the nursery school. You are invading his territory. However, your attempts at being sociable blah, 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 show potential. At very young ages, children are more likely to play beside one another than with each other. All right. Whatever, little boy. I don't care. While you are playing quietly in your room, you are startled by loud muffled sounds coming from someplace else. It seems that your parents are having a terrible fight over something. Your father's deep voice seems to be shaking the whole house. Your mother's piercing screams sound like she's being hurt terribly. Holy shit. That's... I'm disturbed. Uh, go find out what's happening. I gotta intervene. The yelling gets louder and louder, and suddenly everything's quiet. When you see your parents there, they act as if nothing happened. Mom's hair is ruffled, and she seems to be very tired. You can't seem to figure out what has happened. Or can you? Shit's getting deep. You have been invited to sleep over at your best friend's house. This is your first sleepaway experience. Uh, I'm excited. I'm excited. Uh, <laughs> ask your parents if they will still be there when you get back. Uh, go to your friend's house as soon as possible. Your trust has shown impulsiveness and a lack of appreciation for the security your parents provide. If you had, if you have a bad dream at your friend's house tonight, do you think his parents are going to let you into their bed? Maybe. Your mom is in the bathtub taking a nice relaxing bath. You're playing quietly in your room. All of a sudden, the doorbell rings. Mom doesn't seem to hear it. Uh. Mom. Nonchalant. Like a good little boy, you tell mom the doorbell and she asks, tells you who is it without opening the door. You learn the valuable list of not allowing strangers in your home, which makes you smarter. Cool. Uh, an exciting movie is on television. The whole family is in the living room watching it. You get up to get a drink of water, turn to find all the good seats have been taken. Oh, I feel, I feel defeated. Oh, Mom, the doorbell is ringing now. Sit down quietly in the corner. When you grow up, you'll probably need to take a assert assertiveness training course. You miss most of the movie, laughing only when everyone else laughs. The dog comes over and sits by your leg. You can pet it. I'm not going to fucking kick a dog. What the fuck? You can always rely on faithful Goodo. <laughs> My dog's name is Goodo? Or is it just like a dog? Oh, whatever. Uh, your mother gets up to answer the phone and Goodo acquires her chair for you. The two of you can now watch the movie in peace. Alright, Goodo. You and me best friends. Your dad has promised that he will fix your bicycle. He's taking a nap, so he's not doing anything. Now seems like a good time to remind him. Uh, I'm just gonna... I'm just gonna leave dad alone. He's sleeping. Your patience pays off. When dad wakes up, you ask if he'll fix your bike. He's feeling so good that he asks you to go on a little trip with him. He takes you to the bicycle shop and buys you a brand new bicycle! Yeah! Sweet! Awesome! Soon after you sit down for dinner, your mother announces that the vegetable of the day is Brussels sprouts. Alright, I, I gotta tough through this. 
I gotta. Uh, gonna, I'm gonna have to eat them. I gotta do it. What kind of child is that obedient? Have you ever heard the expression develop a taste for something? I love Brussels sprouts. What the fuck, game? There's a nice way of saying that you were forced to eat it as a child. Brussels sprouts may be good for you, but they are also the kind of food that make you have bad dreams. You should. You could have gotten away of not eating. I, I wanted to eat them. They're Brussels sprouts. I like Brussels sprouts. Oh my god. There's a lot of social stuff. Uh, since there's, what's this one? Physical? Oh god. Let's avoid that. One of your playmates is the daughter of your mother's friend. Her name is Cindy. Uh, one day while you and Cindy are alone, you become very curious about one another. Cindy suggests that you play a make-believe game of Doctor. <laughs> sure. Uh, I'm, I'm shy. Let's, uh... I'll let her be the doctor. How is being shy and doing something just not appropriate? I'll be bold. Fine. Uh, you can be the doctor. Cindy seems to be full of good ideas. So why not go with it? She can you move your clothes and lie down on the opera table. I thought there would be more steps to find my comfort zone, like, uh, no, you can't do that, no, you can't do that, I mean, you could get a popsicle stick and poke my tongue with it. That's as far as I was thinking this would go, <laughs> god damn it. <laughs> you take off your clothes and Cindy gives you a thorough examination. You think you might be doing something wrong, but it's great fun. When it's your turn to be doctor, Cindy runs out and tells you you're taking on her- YOU FUCKING BITCH! YOU FUCKING LITTLE BITCH! Fuck that little bitch. All right. You're in school and the teacher is giving a boring lecture. The boy sitting two seats away is rolling up a piece of paper and putting it in his mouth. Using the barrel of his pen, he spits the paper at the blackboard where it lands with a wet splat. The teacher fears. She screams, who did this? Everyone in the class is howling until she promises that the person who did this will not come forward. The whole class will get a punishment. You were probably the only person who saw the true culprit. I'm angry. I'm going to keep quiet, though. Keeping the anger will do you no good whatsoever. After all, why should you suffer because it's to be someone else? I'm not a tattletale. Uh, let's get physical. Physical, physical. You arrive at the dentist and discover that you have four rather large cavity. Oh, fuck. This sounds like something that's probably happened to me in real life. Uh, I'm frightened. I'm going to block out the sensations of my mind. Your status sheet suggests that emotionally you are not capable of performing such feat. The pain sneaks into your consciousness. But it's not unbearable. This experience will toughen you up for next time. Yeah, I had a fucking root canal when I was nine. So that's that's nothing. You know nothing, Jon Snow. I'm gonna skip the other physical thing and go down. I, I wanna vary it. I don't wanna keep going just like straight down. I wanna vary a little bit. At school, all of your friends are talking about a television program that you could not stay up to watch. A friend asked if you saw it. Uh, I'm unashamed. I didn't watch that show. Yeah, I didn't watch it. I don't care. Your confidence keeps them from making fun of you. Someone even offers to let you sleep over his house next time he's on. Sometimes friends can be really great. Not that Cindy fucking bitch. Fuck Cindy. You have just been ordered to bed by your parents in the middle of a favorite television show. Mm. Beg for ten more minutes, sir. Bacon routine doesn't work. They're too tired to hear it. You're sent to bed anyway. All right, whatever. It's okay. Worth a shot. Um, I want to. I want to. I want to make sure things are okay with my family. Let's go this way. It's a time to. T it's time to sell raffle tickets for the school baseball team again. Uh, I'm motivated. Uh, unless Dad, I need help. What a team! You move from door to door of confidence, selling four whole books in less than an hour. Those are whole books, not partially books. It's a powerful bonding experience that strains family ties. You go out for ice cream and celebrate your successful partnership. How nice. Um, oh, there we go. <laughs> Internet man. You just turn off the television set. And your room is pitch dark. Through the shadows, you notice that your closet door is open just a crack. You can almost see the image of a black hooded axe murderer squinting at you through the door. He's waiting, waiting for you to close your eyes and fall asleep. In the quiet of the night, you can hear his hoarse breath making deep gurgling sounds. You look away from the door, then look back. It's open a bit farther than it was last time. If you could only make it to the closet and shut the door tight, you know he won't be able to get out and murder Yeah, that will stop him. The morning light will destroy him so you don't have to worry about seeing him when you wake up. <sighs> I'm afraid. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta be calm. I gotta, gotta do this. I can't be afraid. 
gotta sneak out. Gotta sneak out. I could do this. How is that inappropriate? Fine. All right. As you enter towards the closet, you imagine a murder laughing at how stupid you are for falling right into his deadly trap. You'll show him. You lunge towards the closet door, tripping over the leg of the bed and pulling the bed lines down on you. Ha! You've done it. The closet is closed. He can finally settle down to a relaxing night's sleep. Now, only if those aliens would stop hovering outside your window, waiting to suck you into their spacecraft so they can examine your brain. Yeah, gosh. Don't know how to deal with those guys yet. Um... Let's continue down this way. Jill Brady is always untying your shoes and running away. What a fucking brat. Today she's wearing a skirt. She's bent over, picking up a pile of books from the floor. <sighs> pay, uh, pay no attention, no. I won't, I won't do that. You have much more important things on your mind, like how to get mom to let you join football. How <laughs> to sneak into... Uh, see Friday the 13th, part 45. And why Mr. Johnson, the biology teacher, is allowed to wear the same suit 10 days in a row and you can't even wear a stupid pair of socks for two days. Yeah. Why can't I? The boy who sits next to you in school has just passed you a note, folded in a tight square. He motions for you to read it. You look around the room. Mrs. Hennessy, the meanest teacher in school, has her back to the class. Then it says, What has more crust than the entire surface of the earth? Oh, this is, this is gonna be bad. Uh, I'll throw it away. Yeah, just, I don't want to get involved in this. The noise attracts Mrs. Hennessy's attention. I was crumpling up a fucking no, Mrs. Hennessy! God! She begins walking down the aisle and your heart begins to race. She looks at you squirt in the eye. The smell of her perfume is so overpowering it could kill you by itself. You call, <coughs> she says, Can't you use that scrap paper for something else before you throw it away? Protect our natural resources. <sighs> Well, that was a close one. That was, that was really close, guys. All right, I had to take a quick stretch break. Your best friend challenges you to a rock throwing competition. Oh, yeah, let's do this. I accept your challenge. After a solo of rock throwing for distance, your friend keeps beating you. Your friend dares you to throw a rock onto the roof of an apartment building across the street. Turn him down. Like, no, man, I can't do that shit. He eggs on you, saying, even a girl could probably throw it over the roof. All right, I gotta prove him wrong now. You lean back and watch the rock soar, crash, you guess it. You can run, contact the building and offer to fucking run. Oh God, Shh, glad I got out of there. Woo. All right, let's do some, let's go this way, intellectual. You are in the candy store buying candy with a $5 bill given to you by your mother. Your bill comes to 50 cents. The man gives you back change, but no dollars. Wait, so... Question the man. The man made an honest mistake, he says. He gives you the money and tells you to be more respectful. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, and I feel bad. All right, tend to get a little more physical. You need eyeglasses. The first day you wear them in school, everyone calls you four eyes. Your parents refuse to get you contact lenses. I'm self-conscious, but I'm fine. I'll, I'll tolerate the names. I'm strong. Your social status suggests that you'll eventually get the support you need to overcome yourself conscious from your friends. Yeah. Great. This is like a very inspirational game. Uh, where are we? Let's go this way. Your teacher said you, that your teacher and your mother have traded res recipes for an upcoming bake sale. Before you leave school, your teacher asks if you would be kind enough to run a booth at the bake sale, especially for her. Immediately, your friends begin to snicker behind your back. Fuck yeah. Get the fucking run a booth. Yeah, I'm fucking flattered. Yes, ma'am. I would be, I would be happy to do a bake sale. Your friend snicker and call you a brown nose and a teacher. I don't give a fucking shit. F fuck them then. They're not my fucking friends. Get that fucking run a booth at a bake sale. What's more badass than that? Nothing. Bake sale booth. Melissa Harper is the prettiest girl in your class. You have been giving each other the, the God damn it, King Tees. Also, I just realized. Uh, I have a download of a picture on the bottom screen. Sorry, I was in my break. I also went to Facebook. Uh, you've been giving each other the eye for about two weeks now. You're all set to ask her for a date when your best friend, who happens to be taller and better looking than you, confesses that you cannot sleep at night because of her. Yes, for your advice and the best way to ask her for a date. Unaware of what you do, you are smitten by her. Uh, I'll be I'll be frank about my feelings. Admit that I like her too. 
bringing your fangs out into the open, Vrenzi for acting on them in a short way. You can agree that you can both try to ask her out. Uh, agree to not to interfere with your friend's bid for her attention. What should I do? You could, uh, I don't want to, I don't want to tear this friendship apart. I'll, I'll let him go and see what happens. That was kind of you. Your friend goes out with Melissa for a week and then reports that she has cheese breath. She becomes a lot less attractive to you both after this. Uh, it sucks, I guess. I don't know. I don't have a sense of smells. So I don't know what cheese breath smells like. It could be good or bad. 